All right, hello there. Uh, I'm Brandon Shar. I'm a developer at Bellawatt, which is an awesome company focused on building user-friendly software for the energy industry. And in my capacity there, I'm part of the team that built and maintains the Inertia for Rails gem. And uh, I do want to make sure to give credit to the initial creator of Inertia, as both the original Laravel version and all of the front-end packages were created or maintained by Jonathan Reinink, who is a top-notch guy and has been a great help as we built the Rails version of his concept. So what is inertia and why would I want to use it? Um, I think it would help to introduce it in the vein of a very similar concept that we've heard a lot about this week, and that's Hotwire. We all recognize that modern web dev has changed and now requires increasing amounts of reactivity. Apps that can accept a full page load between every new action and have limited user feedback are becoming few and far between. And if you've ever used a single page app, you'd probably agree that the user experience for it is excellent. But if you've ever built one, you may not have had that same experience. Uh, a single page app requires you to write a separate API, use front end routing to recreate browser features and manage increasingly complex data situations. And with a Rails app, we used to always know like every page load would bring us the freshest data the database had to offer. With a single page app, that's not a given. So now we have to manage these new state issues. We introduce even more libraries, maybe Redux, Bukes, GraphQL. Both Hotwire and Inertia saw this as a problem, but where they differ is how they solved it. Hotwire said, let's write as little JavaScript as possible and move to sending HTML over the wire. And that's an awesome solution for a lot of people. But at least for me, and I'm sure some of you, I said, hang on, I, I like writing React components. I like Vue, I like Svelte. I wanna go back to a simpler way of app development too, but I don't wanna give up on that JavaScript. As, as DHH mentioned in his keynote, Different languages, different patterns, different frameworks, they fit people differently. And at least for me, React View and Svelte are great ways to write and reason about front end code. And this is where Inertia comes in. Inertia allows you to write performant single page applications using a Rails backend, Rails controllers, Rails routing that you're used to, but with React View or Svelte on the front end. No APIs, no front end routing, no global state, just the same MVC approach you prefer, but with modern JavaScript on the front end. So to kind of show that, let's check out a quick app. Uh, this is just your very typical generic simplified Twitter clone. We can write a tweet, we can delete our own tweets, we can scroll view tweets, we can, uh, we can like or unlike a tweet, view replies to tweets, write a reply. And you can see that this is performing like a single page app, it is. There was no page reload. These toggles work right on the page. And the cool thing about this is there is only one piece of state in this entire app, and it is this text box for this little bit of validation. So how does that work? Uh, the best way is let's just add a quick feature. If you click on a picture of a user right now, we just filter their tweets. So instead, let's, let's send us to a user profile page. So we'll go here to our user image, and the first thing we'll do is just change that to be a link to users slash the user ID. So how do we make that work? Well the same way we always have. We add a route to our user show. We go over to our user controller and we have our show method. The only difference is instead of letting Rails automatically render us a view, we're gonna use the inertia renderer, which it asks us to provide it with the name of a component. So now when we click this, we end up at a new page, a new page that looks like this. This is obviously a super simple example. So we use a little bit of cooking show magic to uh, put in some more markup. All this is, is just show a user image, show tweets the users sent, show tweets the users liked, and some props that we need to make that work. If I do this, the page is gonna break. Why is that? Well, where do these props come from? Well, that's, the props come from the same place they always have. How have we always gotten data down to the view via the controller? So now we have our same render function we just had, and we give it a hash of props. We can refresh. Now we end up in this new page with everything we just asked. We're in the exact same responsive world we were before, the same single page app, and now we've added a new page. So that is it. That is as much inertia as I can possibly tell you about in five minutes. Uh, I am planning a short video series that will dive a lot deeper into this that'll include a ton more info. How did the layout set up? How do we test this? How did that current user prop show up? I clearly didn't put that in the route. Uh, 
and a whole lot more. So if you're interested, let me know. Once again, I'm Brandon Shar. Thank you very much for watching. I will be on Discord.